Support for Just Seen It comes from Fandor, dedicated to supporting independent films and filmmakers. Movies from around the world are available at fandor.com slash ptv. Fandor, all for film. Hello, I think the frat broke into my car and stole the airbags. Airbags? Yeah. That's so weird. Is, is, is there anything else missing? No. Okay, uh... Why would they just break in and steal the airbags? I don't know. We should follow police... <laughs> Delta Psy has the upper hand! Oh. Hi, I'm Brenna, here with Zoriana to interview Nick Stoller, the director of Neighbors. Welcome to the set. Thank you very much. This is uh, delightful. The first thing I want to ask is, what was more difficult to work with, Muppets or Frat Boys? <laughs> <laughs> well, you know, I mean, uh, for, I don't direct the Muppet movies. James Bobin has directed the Muppet movies, but uh, I think Muppets are really tough. Because, the, the, I mean, they are, not to ruin the illusion, but they are puppets. Uh, and uh, there's a lot of set building that you have to do, but the frat boys, the frat boys, there's always there's always the chance that they might pull out their wiener as a joke. So that is that's the that's the difficulty with Muppets. With, don't do that. Yeah. They don't do that as much. Okay. So this film, uh, hysterical. I thoroughly enjoyed it, and so did everyone in the movie theater. Oh, thanks. It feels like you guys sort of have this group where you work together with similar like-minded people. Mm -hmm. You've worked together with this group before. Tell me a little bit about the history of this gang of comedians. Well, we were all born in an orphanage. <laughs> um, no, uh, we were, uh, yeah, we, I, uh, you know, we all met, um, I met Seth and then through Seth, Evan Goldberg, um, through Judd Apatow. So we really kind of all kind of, I guess, came of age through Judd. Um, I met Seth on uh, this show called Undeclared that was on Fox. Um, and we were office mates, and we wrote a lot of scripts together. Um, uh, he was all of 18 when I met him, and I was like, who the hell is this guy? <laughs> like, like, who, did, who does he think? And he was just already a fully formed comedic personality at that point. Like, he was just super funny, um, and he wrote, like, perfect scripts every time. And so he, you I, hated him. <laughs> I, hated, I hated him. No, I, I mean, I, he's, he's impossible to hate. I wanted to hate him, and then he was, he's just such an awesome, delightful guy. Along with being hilarious, this movie has this incredible balance between the frat boys and the new parents, where neither one is really the bad guy. Oh, yeah. And I think that any demographic, any viewer will come to this film and have a different viewing experience than somebody who is older than them. How did you go about achieving this, this very delicate balance? That's really important to me, the balance, and, and that there be no villains. Like, I don't think, I, I can only speak to comedy, but I think it's always way more interesting if there's no one's, no one's a villain. Everyone's wrong, everyone's right, everyone has a good point. All right. Well, hey man, if you guys ever need anything or we get too noisy, just talk to me or talk to Pete. We'll take care of it. Same with us. I mean, we get pretty loud over there. Yeah, yeah. We're Game busy. of Thrones, we get loud. When Khaleesi comes on, I'm like, ah! Oh! Yeah, it's crazy. <laughs> All righty. Well. Dope. Uh, and that started with, you know, forgetting Sarah Marshall, like the Russell Brand character who plays like, you know, Kristen Bell's like new boyfriend in a different movie would just be a jerk and you'd find out he was a jerk. And like, he's that's really not, nice. And he's really <laughs> nice. And that's like, even Siegel says like, you know, I, I hate you because you're so nice, you know, and then you discover in that movie that Jason Siegel's character was wrong in a lot of ways. And then that's, a, it's always just makes it more interesting. It makes the movie more relatable. And on this movie, you know, when you start writing a script, and this is true of any script, it's not just true of Andrew and Brennan's, everyone's a little arch. Um, and at the beginning of the process, like, Zach's character was a little arch and more villainous, and, you know, we all worked to push him b to being a more relatable character. And I think Zach's, from the beginning, Zach Efron was like, I want, uh, f when frat guys see this movie, I want them to love it, you know? And that was, it was important to capture that that be kind of a relatable character. This film seems like an amalgamation of your previous ones, because you, you do take that sort of uh, potty mouth humor of, uh, mm. let's say, uh, forgetting Sarah Marshall, combined with that more maturity of five-year engagement as this couple is navigating into adulthood. So you definitely have yeah. both of them here together. Was that a conscious thing for you in what attracted you to that project? I love to try to strike that balance, you know, of just like something that's heartfelt and is and is telling a story. Like the movie really is about parenthood and like I, I had things I wanted to say about parenthood. Like the last scene where, you know, uh, Seth and Rose are, t are kind of talking about like now that they're parents and all that. Like the, those are things literally my wife and I have said to each other, you know, like and it is. So I wanted, but then... On top of that, I want it to be really disgusting and, and insane and, and, like, be a party and, like, go balls to the wall. And I think that that, that kind of combination, you know, I worked with uh, Jonah Hill, and he, has a, he said something which I think is really true, which is when you work on a movie where when you come to set, every day is completely different and you have no idea what movie you're making. Like, that 
that is a recipe for a great movie. So what was the most challenging aspect of shooting this movie? Actually, the most challenging thing to shoot was this thing that we completely cut from the movie, which was the introduction to Zac Efron's character and the fraternity. Um, we see, like, we're, when Seth and Rose go to bed, kind of you, suddenly there's, like, this intercutting thing where you, then you see, like, just pieces of Zac Efron's body, like his muscles and his, like, <laughs> and his chest and, like, you know, and it was pretty funny. And, so like, why he, did you cut that? It will be on the DVD. Uh, yes. <laughs> I want to talk about Rose Byrne's character because, for me, she's an actress that I've just admired in comedy so much. And Get Him to the Greek, she was <laughs> amazing. Bridesmaids, hysterical. But I've always felt that no one's really given her her due. Yeah. Was the script enhanced to give her more stuff to do on purpose because you had already worked with her? So from the beginning, kind of working on the script, even before she was involved, like, the wife character wasn't that involved in the story. I mean, she, you know, and so I wanted to draw out what was funny about her. And when I was having my baby meltdown, I wasn't having it alone. I was having, my wife was having it along with me. We were both like, there's literally a photo of us with our first daughter, uh, when our daughter's two weeks old at a wedding. Like, why are we doing that? Like, why did we do that? Just stay at home with your newborn. You don't be insane. So it's like, so that was, you know, th that kind of craziness to to have not just Seth, but his, like, partner in crime. The first night, Seth Seth's character snuck over to the frat and didn't tell her and uh, that he went over there. And Rose was like, I think I would go. And so it was a lot of, like, stuff like that that she really helped work, you know, work on the script. And um, so, yeah. The supporting cast that you've built is almost as incredible as the main cast with Chris Mintz-Plas and Dave Franco, <laughs> Lisa Kudrow. The supporting cast is fantastic. Okay. What did you, did you have to go out and hunt them down specifically or did they just sort of fall into your lap? You know, I was, felt very lucky about who we got. One of the things is we shot in Los Angeles. Turns out you can get a lot of people <laughs> to, to, to do your movie for not much money if you shoot in Los Angeles because actors want to act, but they don't want to like fly to New Orleans necessarily for a day. And I think too, a lot of people, you know, they people trust Seth and Evan, and I think they trust me, and so they and it's they know it'll be a fun set. I like to have a fun set. I'm not I'm not a yelling director. <laughs> There's so many memorable scenes in this film that you could just pick out and say, oh, that one was the best. But for me, my favorite, which I think you saved the best for last, was at the very end when they're outside the Amber Crombie and Fitch store. <laughs> was that shot, first of all, how much of that was improv? And secondly, did you have regular people just walking by? Because I kind of felt like those weren't extras, that they may have been real people. The extra casting guy I used, Rich King, those were extras. Okay. He's just a really good extras. And again, <laughs> shot in L.A., get, you get really good extras. You know, you get, and so they were just, that was, and I think they actually are, like, legitimately laughing at what's happening, mm -hmm. which is which is just natural behavior, you know? Um, but, yeah, we shot that, the Abercrombie and Fitch, and that was... We had to get approval from Abercrombie and Fitch, and we gave them the script. And then we, imp and then what wasn't in the script was Seth taking off his shirt and all of that. And the Abercrombie and Fitch people were there, and they were like, "What's, hap what's happening?" <laughs> but then they were like, "They're super cool," and they were, and they watched the cut, and they were like, "That's really funny," and they didn't, you know, they were, you know, th they were cool with it. Um, but it was in the moment pretty funny. Uh, and uh, yeah, we that was a fair amount of improv and throwing out jokes and stuff. Um, and then Zach and Seth, obviously, improv stuff as well. Yeah. But he he kind of works out a little bit between takes <laughs> to keep, you know. To keep his veins popping. To keep it to keep it popping. I mean, you know. He does. Yeah, he does. He literally, that was that was one of our first days of shooting. I mean, you would. I mean, you're about to be, like, shirtless and your whole thing. And he he would be, like, quickly do push-ups. And then and I'd be giving him notes while he's doing push-ups. And I was like, I felt kind of rude. I was like, is this okay? And he was like, no, it's fine. <laughs> what, what notes do you, what, 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 how am I doing in the scene, man? <laughs> like, you know, and I'm like, Jesus, you're good looking. Did you have to deal with the Zac Efron fangirls? Because it was a low-budget movie, we kept it pretty low profile. And I thought it would be worse. They were paparazzi. Um, and we had, I remember one time we had to set up a bunch of screens to kind of keep, block the paparazzi from taking shots. But the paparazzi, like, kind of keep a low profile, too. You know, you kind of have to see, find them, you know? They're, it's like, where's Waldo, but with, like, a creepy guy in a trench coat. You know what fascinates me about you, Nick? <laughs> the, <laughs> the fact that you do movies like... Forgetting Sarah Marshall or even this one where, you know, you've got, like, full frontal nudity or <laughs> R-rated films. And then, on the other hand, you've got, like, Muppets, which is so squeaky clean that you've yeah. written. Or Captain Underpants, which you, you wrote as well that's currently in production. Where do these two sides of you come from? <laughs> and how is this? Do you have to have these two to somehow balance your inner inner demons, maybe? <laughs> right. Even though there's a lot of dirty stuff happening in Neighbors or Sarah Marshall or whatever, Fiber Engagement, there's like an innocence 
at heart, you know, and, the, and I'm trying, there, again, there are no villains, there's no one, no one is, everyone's trying to figure stuff out, everyone's trying to do well, and I think that's true of, that's true of the Muppets, that's true of a movie like Captain Underpants, that's, that's you know, and I think, I think the best movies, whatever they are, are trying to get at something honest, you know, and that's all I'm humbly trying to do. Thank you so much cool. for joining us today. This cool. has thank been you. lovely. Yes, thank you very much. Cheers. <laughs> Cheers. Cheers. To Neighbors Cheers. and Zac Efron's chest. Yes. Mm -hmm. Yes, exactly. Mm. Yep. All right. All right. Here we go. <laughs> Oh, Wait, yeah. uh, <laughs> What's happening? <laughs> that was weird. That was I've weird. never seen a more awkward that was cheers. Weird. I'm following your guys' lead. How come you never had him say, you've committed your last crime? Honestly, if you had pitched that before we did it, we would have, <laughs> we, we would have used it. Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. That's, uh, that's an amazing joke. Yeah. I'm bummed out yeah. right now.